Hey everybody, thanks for waiting. Sorry we had a little bit of a delay here. Um, obviously, this this is here we are at the studio and today we're gonna to paint the um, snow leopard. Now, you can see my current setup here. Um, we've got my photo reference, my actual, uh, hang on, gotta turn the sound down off this here. Um, I've got my photo reference, my substrate, and the substrate I'm working on is a super slick um, Mason Knight panel. Um, it happens to be an eight by 10 is what I'm working on today. And then of course we have our palette. So I'm gonna go ahead and go over the colors that we have in the palette. And we have ultramarine blue that is by Blue Ridge Paints. I have Thalo Turquoise by Gamblin Paints. I have Cad Yellow Light by Grumbacher. Titanium White by Windsor Newton. King's Blue by Michael Harding. Pale Amethyst by Charveen. I have Italian Green Umber by Michael Harding. Raw Umber by Michael Harding. Italian Brown Ochre by Michael Harding. Yellow Ochre by Blue Ridge. Ivory Black by Michael Harding. I have Alizarin Crimson by Windsor Newton. Purple Lake by Windsor Newton. And Green Gold by Richardson. Now, the, the cat itself is actually quite monochromatic. And there's, there's really, even though I have a lot of colors here, the colors are all, most of the colors that are going into actually the cat are all kind of in the same family. There's a lot of greens that I see in this particular reference. And a lot of the other colors that I have down are also complements so that I can tone things down if I need to. So there. So we've got our reference and we have our substrate and we're gonna go ahead and jump in. Now today I'm gonna to paint for two hours and I'm gonna take it as far as I can in that two hour span. So whatever you, if I don't finish it up, well, I probably won't get all the detail in, but for whatever part doesn't get completed, will be completed and put out for a video coming to you soon. So. I know Joy Lynn's here. I want to hear who, <laughs> give me a shout out to anybody else that's actually watching so I, so I know who's here and so I can say, hey, I love to know who comes and pops in and actually watches me. <laughs> that's kind of, you know, that's kind of a cool thing. So let's see, I'm gonna look at the cat and I'm gonna grab um, one of my palette knives and actually mix some colors, okay? So I'm looking and I predominantly see a lot of, um, I'm gonna make a mid-tone. I'm gonna to actually make a couple values of basically the same color. And Italian green umber is a wonderful color. So I'm gonna mix it right here in the center here. Um, I like this color a lot, actually. It is um, a fairly transparent paint, which I wish it, it, it was a little bit more opaque, but alas, it is not. But you can see this is making a pretty awesome color and I'll probably be dipping in and getting some more paints as we go along. So I'm going to grab a little bit of the raw umber and add that to it. And you can see I will be getting more paint. Put a little bit of raw umber in there. And honestly, I probably could use a little bit more green and I'm going to make another green taking a little bit of, um, the cad yellow light, a little bit of the ultra blue, and adding a little bit more green to it. And then adding a little bit more of the brown. I'll grab a little bit of yellow ochre. So you can see I'm just gonna be having a big one hot, big mess right here on my palette. You can see me mixing the paints. Now I know there's a lot of commercials that are coming up on here, so I apologize. Now if that's too yellow, that's why I have Purple Lake down. I'm gonna add a little bit more, I'm gonna calm down that yellow look. I'll actually put a little bit more blue in there.
Yeah, the sun coming in my window here is very hot. And it's funny, this time of the winter, it's even hotter than it is in the spring. Angle of the earth, you know. Okay, I'm gonna grab a little bit of this again. A little bit more yellow ochre, a little bit more Thai and green umber. Titanium white. Yeah, that's a good color. So I'm just kind of mixing some colors. And I really want to keep my background very similar to what my photo reference has, which is actually quite um, neutral. I want to kind of keep everything pretty consistent. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to actually focus in one area. I'm just going to kind of pop some colors down. And I'm just putting that right in here because I know I'm going to stack color. And I'm using this hat. This brush happens to be a number six Rosemary Pure Sable number 81, the series 81. Now this part of the cat is in the shadows. This part of the cat is going to be quite bright. So just really want to get my basic colors down where I can. Of course, the snow leopard is a pretty highly endangered species. And this was, um, I had several people asking for this particular animal. Um, as you know, I went online and asked you what you wanted to see. I had a lot of good um, um, suggestions. Let's see, Joy Lynn, hey, there's Abby. I see Abby. Hi, Abby. Um, Bonnie's made it. Hey, happy birthday, Bonnie. But I know you had a, just had a big day. Happy birthday. Um, there's Joy Lynn. Just got in my purple lake, and I love it. Hi, Marty. Marty's there. Hey. Um, for some reason, I couldn't get on for about 15 minutes. Trust me, you didn't miss anything, Marty. We were, we were taking a little, little bit of time getting set up, and uh, that was my fault. So you, we're, we're all good. So I'm just kind of moving around the cat a little bit. I'm looking at my, um, you know, I see where there's some mid-tones and I know I'm going to be making them darker. And I'm using a little tiny bit of oil and following the contours of the animal's face. So I probably will focus in this area, to be honest with you, once I just kind of get some of the dark values, light values, mid-tones, that sort of thing down, um, I'm going to try to focus here because I know that's probably what you mostly want to see. Oh, thank you so much, Joy Lynn, for that uh, super chat. I do appreciate that. You have no idea. Every time somebody does that, it makes me really happy. Not only does it, it makes me happy because it also pushes me over the edge on on some things, so it always helps me a lot for, uh, for YouTube. So I, it, you are greatly appreciated, so thank you so much. I am putting this down here, putting a little bit of a, an edge here. So I'm just kind of, kind of moving around, getting some of the darker values. And just because I have this drawing in, doesn't mean that I am necessarily satisfied that it's exactly correct. Oftentimes, if you've watched my videos before, you know I morph all over my pieces, right? I change it up quite a bit. So I am just popping stuff down where I can see it. I'm going to go ahead and do this area and then just move through so I can focus on this area. So I'm getting some of the lighter values in. I'm going to grab a little bit of white too on the side here. And there is a light. I'll be putting some of the lights in. And um, I will be putting some of the background colors in too so that I can actually have that to work with. And I, like I said, I am going to try my best to keep the colors as close to each other as I can. I don't want to stray, and anybody knows I tend to get really a little wild with my color, and I like that. I like having lots of color, but I am also wanting to stay pretty 
consistent with what my reference has. And it and and the snow leopard, you know, it's the color of the snow leopard. It's 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 kind of yellow ochery gray colors. And I want to stay, you know, true to the true to the animal as much as I can. Now I'm going to use a little bit of the cad yellow and make my a little bit of a warmer, just a slightly warmer yellow. I'm still going to gray it down just a tad. I'm going to grab a little tiny bit of black up at the top. The ivory black with its semi-transparent um, nature will help me keep it, tone, it's toning it down and it, and it's, and it doesn't, ma it won't mask the uh, opacity that I need that the, yellow, the cad yellow and the, um, the titanium white offer. I'm just kind of putting in some of these lighter values where I can see them. I almost need almost to uh, go ahead and do some of my background color. So I am going to go with a larger brush. Do, 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 and I've got my I've got an array of brushes all set out here off to the side. So to do some background, I'm just going to put some background color in this area, and I'm going to use a larger brush. This happens to be a long filbert. This is a number five that I'm grabbing. I'm going to take some, uh, a little bit, of, I'm going to add a little bit of green to it. And that's just the, uh, the raw umber. I'm putting a little bit of oil to help me move it through. So that's going to give me just enough of that darker value to set that edge off. And I do want that cooler. I don't want it that, so I'm going to add a little black to it. And I will fade out some of this so I don't want it to be. Let's see if I can get this in here. Thank you, Joylyn. Did you hear that? Joylyn, you, you're like my best cheerleader. Just love you. She says, everybody give Suzanne a thumbs up. Thank you. Now, who else is here? I've got 11 watching. Some people are being very quiet. They're stealth watchers. It's like me. I'm a, I, I just kind of, I'm like a ninja. Get in, get out. I don't, and I'm looking at the angles around here. So I'm looking where breaks are. So as I come up here, I see a break. Then I come up here, I see a break. It, it's like I look for little breaks or where an angle turns, so to speak. I'm going to grab a little bit of that. And Italian green umber, such amazing color. Just wish it was a little bit more opaque. And I'm just mixing this. A little titanium white never hurts to affect the opacity of anything. So we've got a little bit there to work with. I have a little bit. So you know how I like my soft edges, all that good stuff. I went a little deep on that side. Don't worry, I can always fix that. So, thanks, Abigail. So, I like to, uh, I'm going to grab some more white. I guess I should have my glasses on part of the time. Oh my gosh, that's what I'm painting. So I'm going to push up a little bit. So that helps keep that soft edge. And I'm not, and if I start picking up paint, sometimes you can see it right on the tip of my brush. You can see that I'm starting to get some of the darker paint on there. I wipe that off, wipe it off. Just wanting that to be kind of soft. And there's a break right there's the break. Grab my white paint. And I already know that it's going to blend, so I, it does, it's okay that it's white because it's going to blend in with a lot of what's going on here. Now the inside of that ear, I'm going to put a little bit of alizarin crimson and raw umber, ivory black. And I'm just going to kind of go around this edge here, just like that. And 
because I'm going to want to put that fur on top of it. And there's, you know, just little hairs that come out this way. So I'm just going to do something that's just going to sort of start it out, but it's not going to be the final detail. So I'm just kind of pushing up. I don't want to pick, pull pink um, paint into the ear. So I'm going into the areas that don't, doesn't have paint yet because I don't want to drag that into my other paint. Now I have a whole bunch of really fun brushes that I haven't gotten into yet. And I, I might just uh, open them up today and pull this down into the ear just slightly. Now knowing how much pressure to put on a brush is really something that's really hard to teach anybody. Um, that will only simply come with experience. But if I am painting wet on wet, as I am right at this moment, um, learning to put very little pressure on the brush is key. And I am going to start off here and see if I can do it, what I want to do. Yeah. We'll leave that alone. We will leave that ear alone for a little bit. Okay, we will, we will fool with it. Grab this color here, a little bit of the turquoise, and a little bit of black. You know, the, the color that you go with in the background is really up to you. It's not... But I want to give it enough of a contrast so that you can uh, see this other hair that's going up to it. So there we go. We'll just leave that at that. So back to the hair. Needs warmer. I don't understand the warm and cool. Okay, Marty, you and I need to have us a little class, you and me, um, on warm and cool temperatures. The best way to describe um, warm and cool is when you think of the sun. The sun is hot, yeah? The sun, when you think of sun colors, you think of yellow and red and orange. Those are warm colors. Cool colors, think of snow, think of ice, think of bright whites and blues and, and purples and, you know, the colors that are cool. See, I know that I'm using that as a description, but that's, that's the best way I can, I can suggest to you what the temperature of colors are. Um, if you think of those, I'm just kind of softening this edge because I just want to fade this out here. Does that make sense, Marty? I mean, it's, it's uh, the temperature, and it sounds like it's such a weird thing to talk about, but there's always going to be a lot of temperature shifts as well. The hottest thing on this cat if by looking at the, that is going to probably be the yellow in his teeth, believe it or not, or in her teeth. Also, there's going to be some warmer colors where the light is hitting it. So this is actually very cool temperatures that I'm using. And, you, and temperature is a relative term, right? So you can have some temperatures are cooler than others. And you can even have cool versions of hot, or technically what might be classified as a hot color, you can have different temperatures of that. So for example, yellow. Yellow basically tends to be a very hot color, but yellow ochre is cooler in temperature than cad yellow. So when you look at yellow ochre versus cad yellow, it's the cooler version of cad yellow. But of course, to me, yellow ochre is still warmer than king's blue. I know, it's very confusing. I get that. Okay. So I'm going to focus on something because I know these are the things that everybody likes. I'm going to work my way out from the eye. How's that? So I'm going to grab actually a pretty small brush. And I may go with this one at first. This happens to be a zero eclipse long filbert. And it happens, it's so it's, you know, it's a zero. So it's pretty small. 
And this is one of the reasons I really love working off of a uh, iPad, a tablet, because I can zoom in on the part that I want to zoom in on. Now you have to kind of be pretty sure that your, um, your other proportions are, are pretty close to being correct. I see a little bit of purple. I'm grabbing a little bit of the purple lake and I'm going to put a little blue in it because I actually see a very cool color here. So I'm going to bring, bring in it in. It's, it's almost not even, you almost can't notice it. But when I add the whites to it, you will notice it then. So I'm going here and just grabbing a little bit of oil. And that, I only use my... Uh, I pretty much am just using um, um, the linseed oil as my medium for this. I have my um, Gamsol, and I only use it between colors if I'm wiping or cleaning off a brush, if I don't want to have that much paint on that brush. And so I'm just kind of looking here. This cat has such a beautiful eye. And I'm growing in with a little bit more ivory black. So you've, this, there's, a, there's a quite a bit of shadow on the top portion of this cat's eye. And if my brush starts to lose its shape, I'll twist it like I would twist spaghetti on a fork. Okay. Now, the cat has eyelashes, but how, would, how do I know that? I can't see them. I can see the reflection of the eyelashes in the shine on her eye. So I'm going to actually take a little bit of King's Blue, a little titanium white, and I'm going to go ahead and do what I see. And because being that the eye is a round ball in this socket, I am actually painting the reflection. It's very hard to see, I know. Let's see. Is everybody seeing everything okay? No? Oh, <laughs> Marty says, not really. I understand what cool and what's warm. But sometimes you say, I need to warm this up or cool it down. Yes. Um, this is true, but because it's temp temperature, as I said, is relative. Okay, so I'm going to take a little bit of this green that I mixed. And I'm going to put a little tiny bit of blue. I'm going to kind of gray it down a little bit. And toning, toning, folks, if I say I'm toning something down, it usually means I'm adding gray. So to me, gray can be, I don't have to necessarily have... Um, some gray paint um, mixed. I can. I know that I can make a gray using titanium white and, and ivory black or some other version of gray. So sometimes I may just do the components of that color to make that gray. Does that make sense? So I may just take some white and some black and some green and now I've toned down that green by adding that gray. Alright, so I'm going to do this color and it's still too light. I'm going to add a little bit of brown to it, I think. Oops. Mm. That might be right. Oh, it's, when it's quiet here, it's quiet. Because eyes are the fun part. I love doing eyes. Okay, now they're also, you have to think of eyes as being little round balls. Hey Matt, I got a question. And when I'm looking at my monitor, it looks like the video is frozen. It's not. Okay, I don't know what mine is. Let's see here. I don't know how. Hmm. 
I'm trying. I'll stop it. I'll start it. And I got a commercial. <laughs> I just carry. So guys, if you're watching and you, you're confused, like I'm, I have my monitor too. I have my um, um, little iPad going here on the side so I can see. Okay, so I'm making a lighter version. So the light usually catches the lower part of the eyeball. So it looks weird at first, and I may even get a little darker, believe it or not. There's more of an angle to this eyeball than I've got. There we go. So sometimes I have to make little subtle changes. I'm going to take a little bit of brown and a little bit of ultra blue. Which one, it's ultramarine blue. A little raw umber. And go right up into this here. I don't know if you're able to really focus in on the eye, Matt. I don't know if you can or not. Ladies and gentlemen, my amazing son, Matthew Justice. Okay. And you're probably thinking, but this cat doesn't have a pupil. Okay, good, Joylyn. I'm glad. It's like, I, I don't know what I'm always seeing. Well, hello from Roswell. Hi there, McDougal, Mc, McDougal McStiffy. <laughs> what an interesting name. Well, hello there. I'm glad you're, so you're coming in from Roswell, huh? As in, like, the desert? Like, out in the, isn't it New Mexico? I've been to New Mexico a couple times. I think it's a beautiful place. All right, I'm putting just straight white in. And the reason I'm using white is because I've already got enough of the other colors down that I think it's going to, you know, it's not going to translate as white. It's just going to be light. Okay, I'm going to stop that. I want to get that um, pupil in. So I'm going to use ivory black. Now, sometimes when I... Because of ivory black's transparency, there's times when I don't want to use ivory black. I may go for like Mars black or one of the opaque blacks. Um, but I'm just going to use today. We're going to just use this and it seems to be doing fine. I wanted to get that eye in because that's the fun stuff, y'all. That is the fun stuff. And um, this is going to go up. So I'm kind of pushing up on this. Because I can see that I'll be putting in little hairs here. And like I said, everybody wants to see the eyes, right? Because that's the fun part. And I keep adjusting because I'm looking at the eye. And it seems to be a little bit bigger. This dark part is a little bit bigger. So in case I'm not sure, I'm going to go ahead and bring it down on my reference because sometimes, and I've been known to do this, you end up with a shadow or, or a, not a shadow, sorry, a, where you misjudge your size or your shape or something. There we go. I'm getting that in. And this kind of goes down. The contrast between this color and the light shade is not quite there yet. So I'm going to work on that again. And it's, I'm going to use a bit of this turquoise. The thalo turquoise, it's a little bit darker. Yeah, that's looking a little bit better. And I actually see a little bit of gold. So I'm grabbing... Is my, what's the matter? All right, folks, we're going to take a little break for just a second. I have to fix my cable. <laughs> Be right
And we're back. Okay, I had to have a little wardrobe adjustment, you know. Uh, I also took off my jacket because I was hot. And I'm going to have a sip of tea because I want to. <laughs> and Abby says, hello, sweet Matthew. Let's see if anybody knows my boy. All right, I'm going to take a little bit of cad yellow and some white. So I'm still not satisfied with the, the color that I have here in the bottom part of the cat's eye. Now there's like an angle and then it goes down. That was what I needed. That's the color. Sometimes it takes a little bit of doing. You know, I wish I could say that every time I paint, I always pick the right color the first time. And if I said that, I'd be lying out my face. So, all right, that looks much better. Okay, so I'm happy with that eye. <laughs> I'm happy with the eye. And I'm gonna work out from that eye, okay? And because that's the fun stuff. And I am going to take a version, um, there's like a kind of a lighter patch here, and I'm gonna put some here in this little area. And I'm just gonna be hitting it, because I'm always going right up to the last color, but not going through it. Now you probably heard me say that, if you've, especially if you've been either in my workshops or my, um, as one of my students here in the class, in my studio. I will work right up to it, but not through it. And folks, speaking of workshop, we will have another one coming up in May here in Kingsport. Um, and I will also be having one in 2024 <laughs> at the Booth Art Museum um, in June of 2024. God willing, right? Um, I, ha I had one scheduled for then, um, like, was it, was it last year or the year? Yeah, it was last year, but it got canceled because it's when we started having the other um, strain of COVID running through and people who were in this started backing out. And I thought, oh, that's it. We're not going to be able to have that class. So we're going to try it again. I think it's a pet portrait painting workshop in at the Booth Art Museum coming soon. Coming, no, not soon. It'll be a year and a half from now. But in May of 2023, we will be having a workshop here in Kingsport, Tennessee. And that is just, it will be at the Carver's Studio. And for a lot of you folks that are watching, you've all been to the Carver Studio. It's a great place for a workshop. Um, Good lighting, good, just a good place. And so we'll be doing this again. All right, so you can see I'm just kind of popping down some of the colors and you saw the colors that I mixed. I'm gonna go in and, and put a couple of the spots and other areas so I can go in with my lighter colors, okay? So I'm, I see uh, right in this area, there's this, this wrinkle where this cat's got his um, face all, um, wrinkled up and I went in with a little umber brown and then I'm putting a little bit of ivory black in there and we know that there is a wrinkle because you know he's snarling or she's snarling I'm sorry now oftentimes when you see me doing a a painting I may actually have taken the photo myself at one of the zoos that I go to, or it may be one that I've gotten permission to use from a friend, or let's be honest, sometimes I might just pull it off the internet. But if I am pulling it off the internet and I don't have permission to use it, the photo reference has actually been changed quite a bit. Um, so I always tell all my students, you know, if, if you've been in my studio, you've heard me say it, you know, you get permission or, um, know where your, you know, know where your reference came from. Take it yourself if possible. And I will tell you, I will say this, that having taken photo references oftentimes in lots of zoos, and by the way, I'm using a combination of um, ivory black and raw umber right now. I'm just kind of going in around some of the areas that I see are dark areas around the, the cat's face. And, um, but anyway, 
it does help if you take the picture yourself because you have experienced that animal personally and it does translate it really does translate because you remember what it looked like when it was moving or you um you know just the thrill you had by seeing it it will translate in your art okay so i'm just looking so a lot of a lot of the colors i'm using have at least some amount of gray in them i'm sorry green in them even if it's just a little remember the Italian green umber that I was using is an excellent color. I mean, I love this color. And so I am putting down my darker values of whatever I'm going to be doing first. Okay. And there's an, another wrinkle. Just got to love a snarly cat, a little snarly cat face. So I'm going to go in with and make some of these other spots. And if I'm smart, I'd probably do it with a, a larger brush. I'm kind of lazy and I'll start in with a brush for a while, kind of dig it like using it. And then I won't want to switch brushes. So, huh? Jerry. Hi, Jerry. I'm glad you made it. I know you were going to have to be traveling. I knew you said something about maybe watching from the car. I just got here. Amazing photo reference. Yes, I think it is a nice one. I actually looked and looked. Once we kind of landed on the fact that we were going to be doing a um, um, snow leopard, I started looking for his cool photo references and uh, came up on this one. Now, the brush that I'm using here is number one Rosemary Ivory Filbert. <laughs> and um, I like this brush, even though it's actually one of my older brushes, but it's somewhat frayed. And when a brush is frayed, I don't throw it out, I just repurpose it. So maybe it's no longer a detail type brush, but boy, it makes really great rough areas for hair or, you know, I always find a different use. It's always a different way to use that brush. Um, now, I, I did obviously make um, a uh, underdrawing for my piece. Uh, I don't always, but for sake of time, since we're um, trying to do as much as we can during this live stream, um, I did do this underdrawing anymore. I've been doing it more and more. Sometimes I just dive into a painting, but because I am doing so much more uh, videoing for YouTube and, and that sort of thing, it does save me a lot of time. So I'm just kind of making that spot. Remember that's, so you can see I'm using a kind of a upward stroke. I'm, if you can see the brush sometimes doesn't really leave the substrate. And if you could hear it, it makes that little chick -chick 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 noise, which is so, so satisfying. And really look at your spots. Sometimes you might see purples in them. No joke. Now there's like little spots in here. And some of these little spots will happen later, but I'm going to paint around them. And I see there's a lot of dark in this area here. Okay, but I'm going to keep going forward here. And for sake of time, okay, it's 2.56. So we'll be, because we, we started a little bit late, we'll paint a little bit later today. No worries. I just want to know what time it is so I know where we stand. Okay, so I'm going in with a warmer kind of white color and so it's got the titanium white a little yellow ochre and cad yellow light now cad yellow light because it is a pretty hot color will warm a kind of neutral color up just a tad and that's really what i'm going for here and i will be putting white onto it but this is what i needed to do and then just like i was before and I will actually, let's go ahead and get some of these in too. So it may seem like I'm just kind of popping in um, with a very flat stroke, some of these lighter values, but I'll go back and fur them up a little bit. Two, this painting will be available if anybody's interested. Okay, and there's right here. And 
And as I get through the front part of this cat's face, that snarly look, I love it. I'm gonna go across some of this area. And now the colors start to change and it's actually more of a neutral color. So I gotta be careful, I don't wanna go hot. It's more neutral. So I'm going with that initial color that I made earlier, which is kind of the yellow ochre, Italian green, umber, and a titanium white mixture. And I'm gonna kind of go over this part of her muzzle. And again, I'm gonna to have to eventually put in some of the paint around it. And we're gonna bring that around. Oh, we've got 11 folks joining us. Give me a shout out. I, I know we've got, we've got a, um, Marty and Joy Lynn, Abby, Jerry, Bonnie. Who else is here with us? Oh, and our, our friend from Roslyn. Okay. Now, if I have a pretty cool, I'm going to use a cool white. Well, so by cool white, that means I'm just going to take a little bit of blue and add it to my titanium, titanium white. And I'm going to pop it right here and through here. And it looks kind of weird when I just kind of do it that way, but trust me. Hey, Reeves is here. Thanks for coming. I missed you this week. Okay. And I just pop those in there like that. And so I'm always gonna look at my angles because you know, just because I did this drawing doesn't mean that my angles are going to necessarily be like correct. So I will check to see my angles against my reference and look at, and I'll use my brush and I'll, I'll kind of do like, you know, this seesawing here. And I'm, I'm looking at my canine teeth do have that. I think I'm okay, I think I'm okay. But I will check, okay. And it switches over to this color here, bop. So sometimes it looks weird when I just kind of run it right up to that other color. And I can always blend later, right? And then here's the warmer yellow, the warmer white. I'm gonna put a little bit more white to it. Yes, Matt does not like my interesting clock. He says, oh, that's gonna be annoying. I love my clock. Can you hear it? It's telling me it's three o'clock. <laughs> he's, he's not digging the clock. I love my clock. And that was given to me by a friend who just had a birthday. So I'll go ahead and give uh, him a, a shout out and uh, tell Greg Jennings, happy birthday to you. Hope it was a good one. Okay. Okay, so I'm just kind of letting things lie a little bit. We're moving around the piece. I like to try to get as much of the big stuff in first. So I'm gonna take a little bit of Purple Lake, again, adding a little bit of the uh, ultramarine blue. Purple Lake has a lot more red in it. I love the color, but I do want a little bit more of the the blue in it. So the ultramarine blue kind of does the job of three colors. Having two colors does the job of having three. Does that make sense? Because I can do the um, um, I can have the cool version or not the cool version, the red version or the blue version with just having two colors and then I can have the neutral version. If I already had just a regular dioxazine purple down, I wouldn't have as much options. Does that make sense, I hope? All right, so I made the nostril, and that color, it probably doesn't translate as being a deep purple, but trust me, it really is. Now, the nose leather. I'm gonna switch brushes, because the nose leather is, um, 
it's not very, it's not a lot, it's not a big space. And I know with lions, um, you can tell a lot about the age of an animal or of a big cat by the color of its nose leather. Um, I'm taking alizarin crimson and yellow ochre and making it interesting. It almost looks like a burnt sienna. And if you have burnt sienna on, on your palette, that would probably be fine too. And as a matter of fact, I'm going to cool it down just a tiny bit and adding by adding a little bit of the ultra blue to it. There we go. So, and it's nice that I still have this non-painted area for me to rest my wrist on. So I'm going in here, I'm putting this part of his nostril in. So I think as the cats get older, their, their nose gets darker or blacker with, at least with lions, that part I know. And we're going over here. And we'll get this in here right up to it. Okay, now I'm going in with ivory black. There's a bifurcation or a line between the nostrils on this nose leather. And it gets very dark down here. And so right on this area of the white that I put down first, we're going ahead and putting a little bit of this in. What's that noise, Matt? <laughs> Shh, mom, stop talking. And I'm just right, right here on the edge and I'm, you know, putting the little bit of dark hairs that you're gonna see in this area. Now, you can't really see because I want to keep this pretty pure. Um, right here, there's a little bit of the dark. And you can't really tell, but I'm going here on the top of his little nostril here and his nose area. And there's some of it right here. So you see how we have whisker tracks, these spots that you see here. Um, you don't see them yet. You will see them in a few minutes. You can see it on the reference. Um, there, they will be on the other side as well. And I'm trying to get all this in here. Now you can barely see one of his uh, or her um, molars in her mouth here, and I may try to get that in too. So as I come off around here, I'm slightly blending. It's very, very subtle, but right on the edges. So I can have that softer edge. And I'm trying to make sure that I don't have too many impasto or thick paint lines on this. And I'm really studying that lower lip. Okay, so what I saw here is being, uh, there's like a line right here. So it, he must have, or she must have this, um, for lack of a better, better word, it's her lip right here, but it just looked like blackness from the inside of the mouth. So we'll just paint what we see, not what we think we know. And that is probably some of the best advice I can give anybody. Because I have oftentimes we, we like to take off on what we think we know on something. And it's okay, you, it may be the case, but it's not, always, it's not always the case. So I could say, well, I know this cat has five teeth. But unless I observe it, I only should only paint what I see because maybe I'm not right. Maybe this cat actually does have only three teeth. Yeah, this is my point that you don't, if you don't know, don't assume. All right, so I'm going in, this is just ivory black and I'm doing some of these, what I call whisker tracks. And sometimes they're just actual spots. In this case, it is little spots. 
and there will be little hairs over the top of some of them. But remember, I'm gonna to try to get as much of this in today as I can so that when I, I come back, I could just finish it pretty quickly. Um, I'm just trying to stay on track with the different. You know, different spots here. I'll tell you, this is, you know, if I don't do each spot exactly correct, it's not like a big deal. But one time I had, I had a portrait that I had to do of a Dalmatian. And trust me, you need to get all those spots exactly correct. There is no messing up on that. And uh, this particular person that I was doing, the, she sent me photo references. And it turned out that some of the photo references that they sent were reversed, meaning I was looking at them from the back. And I realized that they reversed because I had two different photo references of the same dog, but the spots weren't in the same place. Ruh -roh. That was a huge, like, I had to call this, this person before I started doing all these spots because I didn't want to get the spots in and they'll say, oh, that's not our dog. The spots aren't in the right place. So I'm taking this small brush and I'm doing some of the detail that I see in the nose area. And I feel or see a somewhat of a purpley dark cast in this part of the nose. And so it's, it's kind of a purple lake, but then I'm switching to put a little bit more black in it and a little bit more umber, because it might be too much. Same here. So even if I go in that color, I'm going in with this darker color right here. And I'm going to have to get some of the color. I do want to get a lot of this painted before I start making this painty over on this side, because then I won't be able to use my, <laughs> have my hand leaning on it. Okay, the inside of the mouth. Well, let's see. The teeth aren't white. They're almost never white. They're almost always like a kind of a yellow ochre white color. So I'm going to take a little yellow ochre, a little titanium white, and I'm going to tone it down because I already added the white. By adding the black, I've just toned it. So I see this tooth here. And I, I'm always going to add um, other colors on top, so no worries. I just get this down as my base color for the tooth. I can always refine it. Now, I probably didn't open this cat's mouth enough, but I think it's fine for this particular substrate. I'm not, she's only going to be in a, a somewhat of a um, snarl. <laughs> Now, it gets a lot darker in here. I'm going to add a little bit more black because she's got a molar kind of on the inside here. It's almost not, you almost don't see it. And it actually looks a little redder, to be honest with you. I'm going to take that burnt sienna color that I made earlier. A little bit of ivory black. Okay. All right. Well, maybe I'll just go in with the colors. So the inside of her mouth may look really black, but I'm actually going to make a color. It's not really black, black. Take an ivory black down here, a little lizard and crimson. Both are kind of semi-transparent. I'm going to put a little bit more red. Now, if I really wanted to have the opacity, which I may, I'm going to actually grab a little cad red. So cad red 
just because of the color itself, even though it's a very hot color, does make a color that you're trying to, to work with opaque. And if I want the coverage, the initial coverage, I'm going for it. So even though I may not want it to be this warm, I do want it to be opaque. And understanding the opacity of your paint, how, how well it covers is so important. Okay, I like that color. Now, that doesn't mean I won't add more to it, more black, but I want to at least get some of this down. I'm going to want to find just the right brush to do it. Okay, I'm grabbing a... Uh, no, this one's not the one I was working with earlier. You know, here we go. I'm going back in with that number six, 81, series 81. right in here and I'm going to do the colors inside of her mouth and she's got this big tongue that's Now, I know that looks really red, and I may want to do that a little bit different. Let me see that. I'll, look, I'll live with that for just a second. Now, I'm going to go in with black, but I'm going to add a little bit of blue to it. And I'm going to go around the outside part of her mouth. This, this lip that she has here. And there's some, I just see it all as one big thing here. And I see light colors too that divide it. Again, I still don't want to have um, too much impasto paint. Now, I can see her chin and I can see um, where the light shines through it. Does that make sense? So I'm going to put this darker area right through here and then I see it switch to Italian green umber. So I'm putting Italian green umber down and because of its transparency, it's actually going to work out nicely. Oops, I see some of the red shining through. And I don't want red here. Okay, we're at one hour. I'm still catching red paint here. I'm going to switch my brush because sometimes if you don't have a clean brush, you can't accomplish what you're trying to do here. There we go. It is very straight here, but I'm bringing this down just a tiny bit. I can just take a little tiny bit of oil. Since yellow ochre, the color itself is a fabulous color. I mean, I really do like it. In case you didn't know that, <laughs> if I haven't said it enough today, it's a really great color. But the transparency is, uh, you know, it's a killer. Um, and I probably could make something that looks very similar to it, but darn it, we're just going to work with what we got today and see where we can go. Okay. So I'm starting to feel like, you know, I'm starting to see this cat coming about. I'm going back in with some of this color here, which was the yellow ochre, titanium white, ivory black mixture. There's always going to be a lot of lightening up. And then I see that it turns more of this, this yellowy color inside of here. So I'm going to pop in that in here because there's going to be, when I start to overlap, when I start to overlap hair, <laughs> um, that's going to happen. And we're starting to see that happening now. 
Now she's got these nice, beautiful whiskers. And if I was able to do this, if I can finish this area of her face before the day is out, I will cut in her whiskers instead of painting them in. And y'all know how much I like my wipeout tool. That's what I'll be using. Okay, so this part of her little snarl goes up higher than what I have it. And so that means I've got to really work on those wrinkles in her face. I'm laying down some of that impasto because I don't remember, I do not want any pasta paint here. A lot of folks out walking around in downtown Kingsport today, they're all getting their holiday shopping done. Is everybody else's holiday shopping done already? <laughs> As I'm not, I think Matt and I might go do some Christmas shopping after we get done today, huh? So let's see here. I don't want to do all the fun hairs that I know are here yet. And the reason I don't is because I need to finish the, kind of get the inside of the mouth done. Now, let's see here. This area has got this darker color. Let's take, what color can we make there? Yeah, let's do a yellow ochre. Let's take yellow ochre and ivory black and make a shade of yellow ochre. And of course, you all know that shade by definition is any color or hue with black added. And that worked out good. I'm going to zoom back out. I want to put some of the shadow in this area. So of course it's better to use a bigger brush if you can. And I've got to look and see what color I see. I see a lot of green, y'all. I am going to green that up a little bit. A little bit of ivory black. And so this whole under the chin area, so pick your color and then zoom it back out. So you see I'm kind of making it a little, looks a little hairier. And this brush happens to be a number five Eclipse Long Filbert. And sometimes you're probably thinking, wow, but that's an awfully dark value. And you're right, but I also know that there's going to be a lot of um, um, other colors or, you know, lighter values put on top of this later. So there's that, right? Grab a little bit and lighten this value up over here because it comes down into the. It's better, in my opinion, <laughs> to go darker first than to go too light up front. And I think that's one of the most common problems that I see with, um, like in my, with my students is wanting to go light right up front. And it almost never works. I'll say it never works, almost never works. Now I know I have a lot of spots that have to go in, but I'm just kind of popping this in so I have something to, to work off of. And being that I, I kind of don't want to have any detail down here, I may just kind of let it be, you know. I'm just kind of letting that soft edge there catch and knock it down a little bit. For a start of a piece, so far I'm pretty happy with it. All right, so this part of her body is, is in the light, so to speak. So it is gonna be warmer. And I'm looking at it and I'm trying to decide what the colors are. So I'm going to take some yellow ochre and a lot of titanium white. And maybe just a tiny bit of 
of the purple just to knock it down a little bit. I don't want it quite so yellow. Not a bad color. And even if I just go and say that that's the color, I'm just going to do that right now. Just if, if, I, if I have my eyes closed, like I oftentimes when I first start a piece, they're very, very, I'm squinting. This would make sense to me. Okay. So we're just going to do that. Um, the mouth. I still have, there's some areas here that I don't have paint on yet. So let's go ahead and get some paint on here. The war there's actually a very warm part of her fur in this area. And I'm trying to see if there's a color that I have that, I think if I take, I'm looking for a spot here, a little cad yellow and this color that I started with and just a little bit there. Um, There's that in here. And so my hand works better in one direction. Um, this is when I sometimes I flip my pieces. I'm not going to do that to you today, but this would be a perfect example of me doing that. Okay, so I'm almost, almost have paint on all surfaces, almost. I'm going to put a little bit more of that color down here. And there's a spot right here, which is perfect because I'll need that spot to break up. And the black's not good. It's got to be brown. So I'm using the raw umber. Remember, guys, if, you, if it's, I'm going to use Italian brown ochre. It's a wonderful color, and I haven't even used it yet. I've tried the snow cat three times and abandoned them. All my base colors just were not getting it. Know what I mean? I do know what you mean. Yeah, I go to detail way too soon. I notice you leave the brush strokes and no blending. Blend over blending is actually probably one of the biggest problems with a lot of folks. I just forgot where I was. Oh, Italian brown um, ochre. I'm just going to soften this spot up a little bit. The, the, one of the biggest problems that I've seen is people want to over blend. That's, that's kind of almost like, because it's fun. We think that that's what we need to do, I guess. I don't know. It's, it's a very common problem. Uh, you're not alone. Um, I'm just going to bring this dark all the way down to the bottom here. Now I'm going to take, I'm going to see if this works. It may not work what I'm trying to do, but let's see if it does. I take, and I've got this sort of, sort of sp splayed out a little bit. There are light hairs on here. Yeah, it's, it's working. It's kind of working. I think I need to have them warmer though. And I don't want to go too far over that spot. And there's some, I'm just doing a little bit of strokes here. And I'm kind of suggesting where hair is, but I don't want it to be too, too hairy. Can you get too hairy? Yes, yes you can. I'm going to put some of the lighter hairs in here. So this is why working wet on wet is wonderful because you can have your blend now I've, I've done that, but I'm not going to go back and hit it, you know, keep hitting the same spot over and over again, unless I'm going with a lighter, a lighter value. Now here's, this is when I want to turn my hand because you know what? I'm doing it. I'm doing it y'all. So here where I put that fur, I, I would be better off doing the light hairs this way because my hand works in that direction better. And I'm doing it again. So now you have the concept of some hairs here. Right, you can see that softness, and I don't know if Matt, you can zoom in on that one little area, but that's a good little hairy area, and I can do that same stroke right out to here. Okay, 
And there's still some spots, but I think you get the idea, right? I don't want to do too much there because I know I can't do everything that I want to do. Because we are working very wet on wet today. I'm going to pull some of that lighter hair over that spot. And there's another one right here. Because remember, this is also in the light. So this area is going to be darker. But right now, I need to get back to the cat's mouth. So I can have, I'd like to finish his mouth pretty, or her mouth. And I'd like to cut in her spots. I mean, cut in her, her whiskers. So let's see where we can go here. I think I need to add some spots. So if I'm looking at this, and I see this color kind of going in here, pop, 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 pop. And as she's snarling, there's a very light area through here, and I might not be able to get it as light as it really is. Put a little bit of cad yellow in it. And there's a hair on my brush. And it kind of goes down into into this area and it starts to get yellow again. So you're always looking for those temperature and color shifts. So it's not going to be all white. It's going to start to kind of go down into the this area. And I, I could get out and start working with the small brush and do some of the hairs. Um, which is not a bad idea. Um, I'm using a little sable, and the sables are wonderful little brushes, truly wonderful little brushes. But I'm going to see what I got here. And I'll look at the direction that the fur grows. And you know, it doesn't hurt to pull that little bit of that black out into that mix. And there's all kinds of interesting little spots in the chin. Again, they have whiskers even on their chin. I'm sorry, I'm probably in the way. I'm just going to suggest where these are going. A lot of what I want to do is probably not going to happen today, folks. I'm going to do as much as I can. And, uh, all right, we've got little spots in there. And right under here. All right. I'm going to go do work in the mouth a little bit. Now, I see some errors. I see some problems. And like I said, that's not uncommon for me to have all kinds of problems. So I'm actually going to take some ivory black and intensify this color a little bit more, this original red that I put in here. It's a very, very dark red. And I, I'm, it's going to still remain red, but um, not quite as red as I have it. Because his tongue, or her tongue, is going to look really deep purpley. Um, see, I'm, getting, I'm using too big a tool, you know, tool here. Nope, don't want that one. Yep, this is the one I want. So I can use that same tool, or I can use my wipeout tool. Because I got a little bit, I got a little messy here. And I could just get in here and just kind of scrape that off. And that's one of the reasons I love this thing. Okay. 
And I do have to get some paint around her so I can, but the tongue, let's talk about the tongue. Now I did put the alizarin crimson down and I also have the purple lake. I'm just gonna mix this color off to the side and maybe I shouldn't be using a brush. Grabbing a, pa a paint knife. Trust me folks, my paint knives are pretty grody because I use them a lot and I don't clean them as often as I should. I'm gonna put a little bit of the purple down right next to it. Now, got that alizarin. And I study it, I'm gonna study it. There's almost no warmth in this tongue. So I'm not gonna use cadmium red, I don't think. I see a lot of reflective light from shine or a wet mouth, which is kind of cool. All right, I'm gonna grab a little ivory black. Joy Lynn says, I, have, um, I totally understand. I run longer than I should on paintings. Did get that last Christmas commission on Friday. Yay! <laughs> now it's just a matter of completing it, right, Joy Lynn? <laughs> it's like, oh, I got all, I felt so good when I got my commissions out in the mail. I had to ship several of them off. And that, that's like, you feel this immense weight just being lifted off of your back when you send the pieces out. All right, I'm gonna use a pretty small brush here and I'm trying to find the one I wanna use. And I may try to use... I've got a lot of fun brushes to, I haven't even opened. I, I say opened, I haven't even used yet. And one brush set that I've actually on my second set now is the Rosemary uh, Workbench Warrior set. It's a wonderful, wonderful set. Um, if you've never used them and you need little brushes, if you like to do lots of detail, it's a, good, it's a good little set. All right, I'm going in with alizarin crimson and I'm just going to kind of suggest where the tongue's going and it's okay if I blend a little bit into that color that I started with. And I'm just getting in there because I will put the lighter colors in as I, as I need to. And so I'm working around this canine tooth. And there, okay. Now I'm gonna to switch to a tiny brush. Going back with the number zero long filbert. It's an Eclipse long filbert, but it's almost, it's so tiny, it's almost like using a round, okay? And oftentimes I will use rounds for this sort of thing. Now I'm going with the, with the alizarin crimson and white, and I'm just gonna kind of start suggesting where the shine in this tongue goes. And I'm just, you see I'm using a very uh, like shaky little stroke on purpose. Same here, the edge of her. And I'm going right there. Now, I'm still going much lighter, but I'm kind of pulling that in. So I'm almost wanting to make that disappear, that edge. Same here. We're gonna go ahead and bring this up a little bit, a little bit more. Because when I start adding the white, straight white, it'll all kind of hopefully pull together. But I still gotta do those teeth, yeah? <laughs> so, taking a little titanium white, going along this edge here. And that's not to say that I won't be coming back and doing more of this later. So like I said, you'll have to stay tuned for Monday. I mean, Monday I should be able to finish. So it'll probably be Wednesday's YouTube video. For my members here on YouTube and for Patreon folks, I will try to do this. I've got, I've got an elephant piece that I'm gonna be sending you very soon. And uh, I meant to have it already out to you. Um, I've got several pieces that are gonna be coming to my Patreon folks. 
But anyway, okay, I'm looking at my looking at my tongue, and I may have to warm it up just a tad. I'm putting a little bit cad red, just a little bit, and I'm putting it in on this side here. Yep, there we go. That looks good. Always looking for where the warmth might be. So the cad red will warm up the um, the alizarin crimson. Alizarin crimson is your coolest, is a very cool red. Okay, I like that tongue. Now it's it's very subtle, but there is a difference now between the tongue and the. I'm going to go in a little bit black. So the inside cheek. The values are pretty darn close, but it's just more like a temperature difference or just a hue. So you can kind of see where her tongue is and where her uh, side of her cheek inside of her mouth is. That makes sense? Okay. So when a, a cat snarls, oftentimes their tongue is kind of rolled anyway. They kind of roll their tongue, right? It's kind of cool. So um, they have little incisors here, and I'm going to start getting, I got to get work on those canines. Now, the canines, I am going in right here. I have a titanium white mixture, and because I already have this paint down, I'm hoping I can make this work. It might be too light. Remember, these teeth are almost never white. They're almost always kind of yellowish. Same here, light tip. And I may be, because I don't have my background color here, I, I don't want to get too premature. I do see a burnt sienna on the inside of this tooth in here. Um, not digging that. I'm not getting the color. I'm not getting the contrast that I want. There we go. Not quite. There we go. Maybe that's getting better. Same over here. And I'm getting the shape of the K of uh, the the um um, other tooth that's back there, but I've got to really get that value down. It's too, too bright. So I'll sit there and work those two teeth down, and I need to go ahead and do this and get some of the other paint in in the time that we've got. So I know it's 20 minutes till four. We'll probably work at least 20 minutes after four, simply because we got such a late start. And uh, now her bottom incisors. <laughs> just little tiny, tiny little tick, 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 tick. I'm just going to suggest them right now. They will go straight down, and I've got to get those big incisors in. So, this is actually where the color, um, I'm looking at the teeth, and the color um, yellow lake comes to mind. So, I'm going to grab some, or Indian yellow, excuse me. These look more Indian yellow, and I'm just going to put down a little Indian yellow. Get a sip of tea. And now I'm looking at the teeth going, hmm. You know, I want, and, and, and this is the thing that makes probably me crazy, and I don't know how you guys are, but being that I'm an animal person, if I don't have it right, it's totally wrong for me. And I'm thinking, you know, this animal depends on those teeth. This animal depends on that really thick tail. This, you know, I'm always asking myself, what is it about this animal? And I have to get it right. I will. I will, I, I gotta get it right. <laughs> it's just all, it's all there is to it. Now we're gonna get a little slight curve to that bottom canine. And this one's a little bit further up and I'm gonna go use a little bit more of this yellow. Yeah, that's it. That makes me happier. 
and then I'm gonna put a little right here. Oh yeah, gotta love it when you find just the right color that just seems to be doing the trick. Now, the beautiful thing about oil paints is you can actually blend and mix color right on your palette. Now this tooth is coming down a little bit more and I may have to make some adjustments on the bottom lip. But I'm going in with this color because I can always add white on top. Um, and there's and the tips of her canines are pretty white. Okay, so I have that. That's looking better. And I know that this is going to get lighter here. Oops. Messy stroke. Gotta clean that up. And I'm just going to make the assumption that her mouth is not as opened up as my reference photo's mouth is, okay? Artistic license. But I do want her teeth to show out nicely. Okay, so that means part of this lip is coming down a little bit more. It's okay, I can make that adjustment. She's kind of got a little, little, not a fissure, but a like a line in her canine right here. I'm just going to put that in there because, you know, detail, fun stuff. All right, I'm going to take some titanium white. And since I've already got the um, Indian yellow down, and I hate when I get a little hair on my brush, I am taking straight titanium white, going right on that tip of that tooth and blending that right into the, to the, bottom of the tooth, down to the root. <laughs> There's some folks outside and they see the cameras, they're probably going, what's going on in there? So they're, they're polite, they just kind of moved on. Maybe they realize they're on TV or on uh, YouTube. Cause they're like, Okay, I'm gonna do that. I have to do some of this other paint around this cat's face because it's not gonna make sense if I don't. All right, so I feel pretty good about that. I feel like we're getting a good reference for that, that bottom, but now I know there's a lot more distance here on the bottom lip because I was a little too, a little too shallow on that. So remember that original color I made that had the purple and black in it? I'm dropping this lip down, so I'm putting a little bit more. And there is a lot of like, that's, that's the actual lip and it kind of goes like that. And so we're bringing that down, which means that's not really that different. I'm putting a little bit more green in that chin on the bottom part of her chin. So I look at distances. So whenever I'm looking at placement of something and I'm not really sure, um, I'll look at, see, if I know that I like where this is now and I look at how big this space is and I put this space in and I can tell you I have to drop um, from the tongue over, there's that, but then it actually gets bigger down here. So I, I see that now. And sometimes when I'm doing the initial sketch, I might not actually catch that. And there we go. So if I know that that's right, I got to look at the distance between this area and this area. And I'm actually pretty much on it. So yeah, I was off in some areas, but it didn't actually make the whole area off, which is, that's good. Sometimes it does. And sometimes you're like, oh, geez, now I got to redo this whole thing. In this case, it didn't work out that way. I'm kind of just suggesting that this is going to look like hair pattern. Okay. It's I'm, I'm working on that very super slick substrate. So 
it's more like I'm um, taking paint off or creating texture without actually making texture. Okay. I told you I want to get this area in and I want to get those whiskers in because I want to cut them in, but I'm going to go ahead and paint the background real quick. Um, and I am going to, I, again, I want to stay with these, uh, interesting colors. And so I'm taking a little bit of yellow ochre and I'm mixing a little bit more of the Italian green umber. And I'm just kind of moving around this cat's head. So when you're using um, um, opaque colors versus, you know, opaque colors are going to cover so much better on these substrates than would a transparent color. So you know as soon as I add titanium white, it's like instant coverage, right? It just works. Let's see if I can get around this face. And I will have to get some more Italian green umber. And I need to get some more of this. This is Michael Harding's Italian green umber. I love it, love it, love it, love it, love it. Did I, could I tell you that anymore today? <laughs> Joy Lynn says, Matt, well done as always. I couldn't agree more. My son is a very busy man and he takes time out to help his mom out. So for that, I am very grateful. So again, I can use artistic license whenever I want to. If I want to ca capitalize on different values, I'll just go darker. So like if I want it to be darker here, I'm just going to go darker here so that I can capitalize on the lightness of the cat's body or the fact that this, this chin is going to be really light or I want to emphasize the sharpness of that tooth or whatever it is I'm trying to capitalize on, I'm going to. I'm going to take it. I'm going to take it and run by changing the value of a background color or whatever. So I know it looks weird at first, but just bear with me. I just kind of like to add some interest in the background a little bit. You know, ivory black is almost always so flat and it doesn't, it's not a, it's just not a pretty color when you can add so much other stuff to it, right? And what, I may be really rough with it like this at first and add some other colors and you know, I'm adding a little bit of gold green. I'm just playing with it. I'm using a lot of the same colors that are actually already in the cat. Um, and the nose comes out a little bit more, so we'll fix that in a minute. Okay, we can add some of these. And because this, this particular color I just picked up has a lot of titanium white in it, wow, instant coverage. But I liked how the gold green, the gold green looks in here. <laughs> you know, I'm just going to play playing around and mixing some colors here. And I could just leave this for another day because I don't want to bore you with my background colors. But I needed some color around the cat to. Uh... And so this is where, because I just have these colors down like this, I want to blend them just a tiny bit. I'll dip this little brush. This is <laughs> this little brush. It's a number 12. Uh, long flat series 279 so it's a natural hairbrush and it, it's it's great for popping down and just kind of taking the edge off of paint and blending I love this for backgrounds um, it's a great brush it's I mean I, I'll abuse my brushes folks that, that that's that's goes without saying um, and this brush right here I've used for varnishing <laughs> because it's soft you know it's a soft brush so, and it doesn't really lift up too much. It doesn't lift up the paint. And so even if I get right up on this head, on the head of this cat, it's okay. And I, but this gives you an idea. You can, oops, I picked up, didn't mean to do that. 
I ended up picking up some of the yellow, Indian yellow, but that's okay. We'll make, we'll make it work. Okay. Okay. Let's just leave that like that. I'm going to probably tone it down considerably, but I'm just, I just need to have the color down around the cat's face. All right, so I'm going back in with some other color, with some more opaque paint over the grays and next to the face. I'm actually carving it in. And I know that this note, this nostril is coming out a little bit from the face. So, and I need to get in here. This is where you, it's like, it's like um, doing surgery. <laughs> Matt, it looks like we're focused on my hair and not the cat's, the pic. <laughs> well, I can't, what am I supposed to do? What am I supposed to do? Okay. I'm just kind of fuzzing that out a little bit. And we'll be able to do some of these other little hairs. Let's see where, what did I have here? Let's put a little bit of that in that. Okay, so we have that background color kind of in this area. And this is where I'm going to swoop it up. See how I'm making the soft edges into that background that looks like fur, but it's soft because we also don't want things that are in the background to be as sharp a focus, right? So by painting wet on wet, now I can go in later and do some of the detail in here, but I like how that looks, okay? I am also not really happy with the color around this part of the cat because if I'm going to put the whiskers in, I need it to really shine out. And I do want it to be somewhat neutral. Not quite as warm as I kind of messed that up a little bit. So even if I just get it the way I want it to look close to the animal's face, we're good. All right, I got to get it in the inside of her mouth. So I'm using a very small, um, this is a, a red dot, which is a synthetic, red dots are synthetic sables. Very nice brushes. If you have an ethical reason for not wanting to use hair brushes, these are really, really great. These are great brushes. All right, there we go. Okay, feeling a little bit better, but I've still got to work on those teeth, still got to work on this bottom lip. There's a lot of work that still has to be done, but I think you guys are getting the idea. Now let's just, since I don't want to leave this, this cat without eyes on both sides, the, the eye on this side is not really the, as relevant. You can't see it. Um, but I'm going to take some ivory black and uh, I like the purple, a little bit of that purple in it and, and a little bit of the brown and um, it's really just the, the lashes, I guess you see here. And we're going a little bit more intense here. All right, I'm going to 
going. I'll, I'm moving all over the place, okay? So just try to keep up. <laughs> if you have any questions, I'm, I'm just seeing as much as I can move. I always say, just do the easy stuff first. Do the easy stuff that you see. And then when you need to, you come back to the other stuff. And that's kind of what I'm doing. I'm firming up a lot of the areas on the piece that I'm like, eh, it can be done better. Or, oh, I should change the angle here. That's what I'm doing right now. And making sure that it, things are lining up properly. So I'm, I'm checking the eyes, the angle on the eyes. And so far, I'm still good. You know, I because it's easy to get off. It's, it's easy to get off on your structures. Like there's an area of the nostril that comes out a little bit here and I didn't see it the first time. So that's what I mean. I've got to go back and check and check and check. And this goes up like that. And then this actually curves out a tiny bit. And I pull this down here, pull this down here. And there's actually a little bit of a black edge um, right along the, it's, it's so faint, but I just want to get it, just want to get it. All right. Let's see. I'm going to take a little bit of doing some browns here in this area of the head face. There's still areas here where I don't have paint. Try to go in the direction that the paint's going. A lot of folks out walking around. And there's even little spots. And some of these spots, I mean, it's going to be easier when it's a little bit drier for me to actually complete it and put these spots in. Okay. Now, I kind of lost some of the snarl. I got to get her little... So if this is coming out a little bit here, not much, but a little bit. And she's got this little bit of a line here. She's got a little brown spot here. There's a little wrinkle here. There's a wrinkle. Matt loves when my clock goes off. Don't you, Matt? Uh-uh. It's funny, a lot of my students identify certain bird sounds was when they know that their class time is done. Oh, that's my bird, isn't it? <laughs> yes, it's the blue jay. It's time for you to leave. I have lunch plans. <laughs> they all know. They all know their bird. Let's see. I'm pretty... Making sure we still are lining up. A lot of this is going to be completed. Like I said, it'll all get put completed on Monday. And my paints will still be good, and I'll be coming in and just knocking it out. Knock it out. Because at that point, I will have a little bit of dry on it, and it will make it so much easier for me to do all the fine detail. And that, folks, is the stuff you're going to catch next week. So if nothing else today, I do want to try to get this area done so I can get at least the whiskers in. And this is when you start adding the little brush strokes and all the fun stuff starts happening here. So, what do I need to do to make that happen? All right, so we're going to do this here. We're going to give her a wrinkle. Come on, so get it. Once you start getting some of the paints in, it's, it's harder to um, um, to put the detail on it when you've got really wet paint. 
I'm going to put some of the spots in this area. So this is the part of here. We've got spots that come down here. Come on. I'm going to put just a little bit of this red in it. It's going to seem like a strange thing to do, but it's going to make my spots a little bit more opaque. This is the CAD red, and it also makes them not so flat. And there's little, little spots in here. Like I said, CAD Red is the bomb. It's, it's like my secret, my secret tool for making blacks not look dead and for creating the opacity that I want. It's also a great color when using like dog eyes. When I'm wanting really rich brown for dog eyes without them being completely black like my go-to color. Okay, so I've got some spots in here. And don't worry, a lot of this is gonna happen. We're gonna get some really good spots on Monday. I like the gold green too, uh, Abby. Gold green is, it's, it's kind of like an underrated color, but it does add a lot of richness. It just, it just adds a lot of richness to anything that you're working with. Okay, so I want to get this immediate area because most of the whiskers are happening in that area. So I'm looking, I need a little bit of brown. I'm gonna use the raw, the uh, Italian brown ochre too. And I'm making little hairs. And folks, I am going to turn this over like this because I work better in this direction. Now I would I usually would tell my students if they're work, if they're doing this to also turn your reference over, but I'm not going to today. I don't want to I don't want to confuse you guys and uh, so I'm putting little hairs in. Now I'm grabbing some of this. And you have to, to, to really do the little hairs. It's like you've got to keep a light hand. Now I could use um, a, uh, one of my, my infamous little brushes that I like using, which is the um, sword brushes for hair. But I am just going to do this for now. How are we doing on time, Matt? Okay. It's 4.06. Okay, we'll stop at about 4.20. So give me a 4.15 um, heads up, if you will. All right, because I want to get this part in. So always be conscious too, folks, which direction the fur is going. Again, this is where I tell you, don't make assumptions. Um, you know, I have seen some beautiful works of art. I mean, truly amazing works that are so technically, um, they're very well mastered or, or rendered, except they miss some of, they miss, they miss the big picture. Like they miss... Oh, guess what? This animal doesn't, you know, the hair doesn't move in that direction. Or what were they thinking when they did this or whatever? And it ruins it for me. <laughs> they, they, whether it's a structural thing on the animal or um, little things like that. Just, ugh. all right, I can tell by me putting this in, it's not going to get that wrinkle in. But I'm going to try my best to get the area of this muzzle 
again. Got to turn it. Because this is the one area where it's really light. And I'm going to put a little cat in it. Oh, wow. <laughs> Thank you, Joylyn. She just became an ultimate supporter. I appreciate that so, so very much. Very, very, thank you very much. Um, that, make, that means a lot to me. All of a sudden, it's funny because I, I all of a sudden will see like little things pop up on my, on my screen. That's a fun little thing to see pop up. Just saying. So, folks, if you're curious, too, if you're watching and you're curious about what is offered on my membership on my YouTube, of course, I also have the Patreon. Go ahead and check those tiers out. You can find out a little bit more about it. And uh, hopefully you can take advantage of that, too. And like Matt and I keep saying, we've got all this great, wonderful equipment. We want to do more of this. And um, I know that after the holidays and things kind of settle down, it'll be easier for everybody, I think, if we're to do things like this. And eventually, this will only be available to my um, Patreon and to my YouTube members. Right now, I'm, I've got it open right now. Um, but it won't always be that way. Okay, I may, there's a lot of little things, there's a little stuff here, but I got, I got the major stuff in. Let's see. I'm going to put some of these other little hairs. Yeah, it's not wanting to do it. It's not wanting to do it because I'm trying to do little hairs on, um, on a very slick surface. Now, sometimes somebody asked me not too long ago, maybe it was Joy Lynn, maybe it was, I'm not sure who it was, asked me if I did underpaintings. Do I ever do underpaintings? Was it you, Joy Lynn, who asked me that? <laughs> yeah, you did tell me you would be back, and I appreciate you for it. Thank you so much. Um, somebody was asking me about, do you ever do underpaintings? And the answer is yes. Um, and sometimes with some of my commission work, I'll actually, like if I do, an ex say it's something that's very specific, like I need it to be, you know, and I actually do a drawing on, on my canvas. Um, I will oftentimes ground my work, meaning I put a um, kind of like a loose backwash of, of color onto my work. Um, I guess maybe it was, um, now that I'm thinking about it, it wasn't you, Joy Lane. I think it was. it was you? Yeah, okay, so it was you. Because I know, I think I got that same question from my student, um, Betty, um, about doing underpaintings. And, and I do do them, but not always. But I almost always ground them. But some of the stuff that you see that I do on YouTube, just for time's sake, doesn't always, ha doesn't always happen. All right, I'm gonna cut in whiskers because folks, I wanna cut in whiskers. And what I'm gonna do, and you're gonna laugh, I'm gonna prevent my reference from, from rolling. And I am going to turn my picture over to the side because my hand works in this direction better. So if I'm putting in little whiskers, I'm just going to, oops, it is too. I don't know if it's gonna do it, folks. It may not actually, no, it's not gonna do what I want it to do. Forget it, we're not cutting in whiskers. I may do it a little bit on this side. Um, it's not, it's, it's not doing the transparent whisker, you know, like the, what I want it to do. I'll just kind of do it like that. And this is, that's kind of what I was gonna to try to do in a nutshell. Because I know we're getting close on time. I know that sometimes whiskers don't always go in the direction you think, you know, they're not always straight, they're not always long. There's different shapes, some are twirly. Um, and also know that the more tense a cat is, those whiskers may be laid back and straight if they're really scrunching their face up. If they're, so they also will show um, 
their emotion, even the direction or how their whiskers are. I'm going to put a little whisker, a little, little eye. Please say again the name of the tiny brush set, Warrior. Yeah, it's called Workbench Warrior. Hang on for just a second. I just so happen to have it, the little. It's the Workbench Warrior miniature set. If you want, I'll hold it up. And it looks like this when you get the pack. And in the pack, you get a series 88 pure sable rigger. You get one, um, that's a size one. Then you get a series 402 designer pointed sable, number two. And then on your red dot pointed rounds, you get several. You get a, a 10 aught, a two aught, a zero, one, and two. You also get a series 99 pure, uh, pointed pure sable, that's a size two. A series 42 pointed round pure squirrel, uh, and it's a size two. And you get a series 93 pure sable spotters, okay? And it's a number two. So all together, you get like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. You get 10 brushes. And I want to say that the that the cost of the the cost of that set is like 30 something bucks. Now, of course, you're gonna have shipping, and I do recommend anybody um, go ahead and pay for the expedited shipping, because if you don't, you'll be waiting for too long to get your brushes. But you'll get brushes that look like this. I haven't even, like here, boink, I didn't even take off the little covers. So you can see that they're pretty, they're pretty awesome little brushes. And I, I actually bought my first set because I thought I was gonna do a bunch of miniatures, and I never really got around to doing miniatures. And I started using the brushes for detail work, like what I'm doing today. And I liked them so well that I, <laughs> cause I wear them out, face it. Like I wear, I use my brushes every day. So um, I bought a second set just to have. So I actually didn't use one of those brushes today, but um, trust me, I definitely will be using them soon. <laughs> so yeah, definitely a good buy. I would definitely recommend anybody getting those brushes. All right, so from here, I'm looking back at here and I'm going back into the, this part of the cat, doing a little bit of that chin and that just widened her chin just a tiny bit. Okay, so we got about, we're gonna do this for about five more minutes, folks. And we're gonna head out of here. We've been at it for a while, but I think we basically have, um, I've got paint on all my surfaces basically, and I'm happy about that. Um, and I'll be able to do a lot more of the detail that I want to do when I come back on um, Monday. And as soon as I get it done, I will share it with you guys. You know I will. And I'm looking again, and I'm looking, I might have gotten this, I may bring that tongue down a little bit. See, I'm always futzing around after I get it, or I think I get it where I want it, and then I'm like, no, nah, it's fine. Because in, in the mouth area, there is... Um, a lot of reflective stuff going on. So, so there's lots of like saliva <laughs> in her mouth that's just making it shine and glitter. And I'm just really wanting to get that in later too. And I can't really do it now. Um, and we're gonna bring this out just a tiny bit. And when I, yeah. So that, that like this brush is a little, it's a little filbert red dot that I'm using and it's, it's the bomb, it's doing great. Now, always be careful too. I started putting down the cool, the cool color that I had mixed for the white, but maybe here I can use that, but it's actually kind of more the, if I took white and added, um, the Italian green umber. I hope you enjoyed today. Um, thank you so much for joining me. And um, yeah, so Abigail's got the set now too. Abby, you like yours. Please say again the name of the tiny brush set, Warriors. Okay. All right. Th that's what I just said, right? Ultimate. Yeah. So. Yes, these, these are wonderful little brushes. And basically, you can't go wrong with any of Rosemary's brushes. I, 
I mean, I have other brushes, trust me, folks. I do have other brushes, but <laughs> they're by far the best. They're the best. I can't, I can't say enough about Rosemary's brushes, and that's pretty much I use all the time. That's, that's kind of my go-to brushes. All right, I can't, I can't do any more on that, so it's not going to... All right, Matt, what time do we got, bub? All right, so we're just getting a little bit here. I'd love to be able to do some of this other stuff, but it's not going to let me do it because of the wet surface. I want to be able to, I can see there's a nice little patch of light right here. I want to be able to get that in. And I could do a lot of the detail on it later, but I just wanted to get that little light patch. But all in all, if, even if I just stop now, I think this definitely is kind of a convincing um, snow leopard. Um, one thing I would do ask, you know, one of the things, like I have one of my students who loves doing birds right now, and she's, she's learning a little bit more about birds. And, um, but I'm always, you know, asking my students, make sure you learn a little bit about the species of animal you're painting. Don't just jump in and do something and go in blind. Um, the reason I say that is because as you develop as an artist and you become better and better known for what you're doing here, if, if it's wildlife or whatever, pet portraits. For example, if you're doing pet portraits and you're saying, oh, I got to do this uh, standard poodle and uh, da, 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 da. Trust me. If somebody who is a standard poodle enthusiast looks at your work and says, oh my gosh, she totally messed up the eye. The eye is not that round. It's more almond shaped. Somebody's going to call you out on it. Understand the breed or the species of animals that you're painting so that you can do a more convincing um, portrait or um, of that animal. You know, don't, don't just jump in and, and, and assume that it's going to look fabulous. I mean, it may look like a really nice painting, but it may not look exactly like it should if of that animal. All right, folks, we're going to call it a day. I think you can look, look at the piece and feel pretty good about, or I do, I feel pretty good. I think it definitely looks like a snow leopard. And I hope you enjoyed today. And I know that we're going to be doing more of this sort of thing, especially closer to, you know, as we get away from the holidays a little bit. This was kind of something Matt and I have been saying, we need to do more... We need to be doing more live streams. I love, I love painting, so this is never a problem for me. I gotta work around my son's schedule. And speaking of my son's schedule, of course we've got um, our next workshop is coming up in May. I don't have the dates as of yet, but I know y'all need to start looking for, or making plans for a workshop that will be here in Kingsport, Tennessee. And it's, they're always gonna be three day workshops, usually a Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. And it will be in May. So, you know, we won't have to worry about driving in the snow. And we won't have to worry about terrible weather. And here in this area, in this neck of the woods, we have pretty nice weather um, at, at, in May. And, yeah, we'll do a workshop. Um, we've talked about some different subjects. I've had people say, I want to do koi. Um, I've had other people, I want to do water. I haven't decided on the subject. So um, a lot of my folks who have attended the workshops before, they know the deal. Um, and I will entertain um, a lot of ideas. Um, you know, you guys can say, hey, I really want to learn how to do such and such. Know, too, that I do have a, a um, pet portrait workshop coming up. I think it is in June of 2024, but it's at the um, Booth Museum in Cartersville, Georgia. So it's um, so kind of put that on your calendar. If you're really wanting to get into a workshop where you do just pet portraits, it's just a two day uh, workshop. So know that that will be coming up. And I want to say that is in, I want to say it's, it's June or July. You'll have to go to Booth's Art Museum to look for sure on the actual schedule. It's so, it's so far away from me that my brain doesn't even project that far. So, um, but know that that will be coming up too. And I'm going to have some other workshops and live streams coming your way. So from Kingsport, Tennessee, I want to say thank you so much. And I'm glad you came and I will catch you next time.